Conflict you know, again, that, what bothers me is is that, uh, again, a fair amount of experience with a lot of, of these parents and families, you, you get to your wit's end with a very difficult child, and a difficult child that you've tried different alternatives uh, uh, to, to help, and, and with school districts and all of, all of what it entails uh, uh, for, for, for some of the clientele of these, of these facilities. And to and and to, to then suggest uh, things that just aren't based in, in fact, science or otherwise that this 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 will all sort of come true, I really believe is is preying and in a very unethical unethical fashion preying on the anxieties and the stress that exists in these families. These the repercussions of the you know, of the families engaged in our first hearings, and I assume many of the families that had their children either abused or died in this hearing repercussions within those families are long-lasting and sometimes very devastating for the adults who uh, later find out maybe that they had participated in this and, and, and how badly they feel about it in some cases. In the earlier hearings we discussed in case where they voluntarily had their children kidnapped from their homes and then realized that what, they, what had, had taken place certainly when later the child was tragically uh, killed in those, in those programs. So the, the, the idea that this is, this is a, a harmless intervention at many levels, uh, I think is very dangerous for us as policymakers to, to consider. Uh, again, uh, you know, we, 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 do, we don't want to paint with a, with a very broad brush here, uh, but the fact of the matter is we're, we're starting to see emerge here some programs that are, that are very dangerous, that are very reckless uh, 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 with respect to the health and welfare of the children that they have in their custody, and uh, uh, you know they've 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 you know got that custody I think under very suspect uh, uh, representations and conditions to those uh, to those families and to their parents. Uh, Mr. Coots, if I might, I, a couple, if I have a little bit of time left. Uh, the, these financial connections, you know, we went through a long scandal here on, on, on colleges uh, referring people to certain student loan lenders, and you might not have got the best interest rate, but here you have a referral service that may be financially connected, I assume through either fees or commissions uh, for the referral of, of these patients. And so, again, you have no sense that you're getting informed, independent, ethical uh, representations from your from, from the phone calls you made. Can you tell us about this, or what you know about the, the financial arrangements that may uh, create a conflict of interest? I would say one case was worse than that. You had a husband-wife team claiming to be independent. One was the referral service. One was the actual program. We called the referral service three separate times as three separate parents with three different, very different kids, and each time we were referred to the same program, and it's because it was a husband-wife connection that was but not But they hold disclosed. themselves out as being independent referrals? They, well, I don't, they didn't disclose that to okay. us as the parents, so I don't know if they hold themselves out as that, but there was no evidence anywhere on their web or anything. They told us that, yeah, we're related to this program, and no matter what your problem is, we're going to put you to the same program, which appeared to be the reality of the situation. So there, and there were other issues where I think the referral services are certainly getting money in many cases from the programs for the referrals, and those are undisclosed types of situations typically. Excuse me, unless you, you know that as a factor? Yes, we have cases oh, of okay. that, yes, absolutely. So you, the, the one was the worst case where you had the husband-wife, but you had other situations where you had undisclosed to the parents the referral service was getting money for each referral they made to the program, or a vacation, or there were other things like that they were getting paid. So there was a financial relationship between them. A lot of these programs appear to have a, a, a 28 day or 30 day. There was a time, and I don't know if it's relevant in this case, where that was related to insurance payments. But you got an insurance benefit that sort of had a 30 day cutoff on it for mental health or, or treatment. Is that operative in this, in this situation with respect to uh, uh, placement of, of, of these uh, young people? I don't know, but with respect to health insurance, we were marketed by some of the programs, one in particular saying that you might be able to get money back from your health insurance, but what they told us was don't tell them in advance because I think the word was you'll be up a creek. Uh, so they said wait till the end. Well, you know most insurance programs require pre-approval for substantial disbursements, and so you advise a parent not to talk to the health insurance company, get them to believe they're going to get money at the end of the day. 
I believe they would be up a creek probably because most health insurance companies, even for hospital stays, you have to get pre-approval for health insurance. So for something like this that's even possibly not covered at all by health insurance, to give parents that advice is very misleading. 